everybody. This is Ken. This is Eric. This is Dex. And this is Ken. This is Alter 8 x Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Alter Apex Radio. We are the band Alter Apex. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out with us. This is our show where we invite you to come and hang out with our band, hear what we've been up to, and also we introduce you to bands that we are discovering out there while we are promoting our music. So hang out. You can have a good time. While you're here, make sure to click subscribe and click the notification bell so you can keep up with our future videos. Also, follow the Alter Apex Radio playlist on Spotify. We put all the bands that we feature on this show on that playlist. It's full of awesome music that we know you're going to love if you're into hard rock, rock, punk, metal. We do it all. If you listen on Apple Music, there is a link in the description below this video where you can pull that playlist up. So as Ken mentioned, we are Altered Apex. We play grungy type rock. Uh, please follow us on our social media accounts. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also have a four song EP as well as a single out. Um, we do have music videos for all five of those songs. And most recently, we did a collaboration with our buddies Just A Ride out in the UK, where we covered Stone Temple Pilots and made a really rocking video where we were all looking like we're in the room together. Uh, we had a really good time. So I hope you can take a minute to go check that out. Um, also, we have a merch store. Um, we got a hoodie and a hat and some t-shirts. Um, if you know any of that stuff interests you, it would really help us out if you went online and purchased something. Uh, you can find the link straight from our Instagram account. Um, that's pretty much all we got going on in our world. We are working on some new music. We will have something for you very soon. Um, also, we have a gig coming up on the 21st here in Albuquerque at the Launchpad with our friends, Nights Like These, who are coming out from San Diego, as well as Bright On Kid and Fighty Monsters. We are super stoked for this show, so hope to see you there. All right, now we're going to do a short segment, kind of a get to know the band segment, where we uh, we're, we're calling this What's Rock in Your World, where we're going to go around to each member in the band and find out what we've been listening to lately, see if there are any surprises in that. One of the best ways to get to know people and one of the ways that we really find great social connections with people is by learning what music they're listening to, what they like, and, and identifying with them over music. So let's go around. Dex, you want to go first? I think it, you know, it, it's not going to be too much of a, of a surprise to you, Ken, because you pretty much know what I've been listening to, but I've been listening to uh, 311's Greatest Hits, 1993 mm -hmm. to 2003. Uh, pretty much nice. on repeat. Uh, like, uh, I, I think like, you know, when 311 came out and, you know, I was, I was in a punk band, it, it certainly was not cool to like 311, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I, I probably would have lost some cred with my friends back in the day, you know, cause you know, they were sort of considered, you know, oh, that's what the jocks like. No, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're too popular or, you know, it's like, uh, but I've always, I've always loved them. You know, I think Tim Mahoney is like just an incredibly, incredibly gifted guitar player not only, you know, like uh, with just guitar, but also like, you know, with the effects that he type, you know, that he uses on the guitar has always been like a, a super huge, like inspiration, you know, but they're just like really grooving. They have different styles of music that they play, you know, so it's just, it's a lot of fun. So that's definitely a throwback. So like, I, I know when we hung out the other day, we were, mm -hmm. we were listening to 311 and we discovered that we have like a real mutual love for them. And there was like even yeah. an album, that album Transistor was Transistor. one that was like, we had like an amazing experience with each as individuals. And we discovered that, which was cool. Like that's exactly what we're talking about, bonding over music. But right. um, so it's, it's kind of a throwback. So like, you're not always listening to 311. So what got you listening to it recently? I don't. 
honestly, like, uh, was it something know. in that song that we're working on with attendant? You said it reminded you of them, right? Like something reminded you of 311. That that I think very well probably could have could have been it. You know, like you know, because we're working on that song with with attendant, and you know, like I've already kind of messed with like a little bit of like guitar stuff. But you know, there was like maybe one note that I hit like in in the chorus where I'm like, oh. That totally reminds me of that 311 song. <laughs> it's funny you know? how a note can do that, man. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. What's rocking your world, Eric? We should have some sort of like radio thing. Like, What's rocking your world? <laughs> 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 oh man! So, so I actually pulled up my recently played on my Apple Music just to kind of see what's been heavy in my rotation. Um, the first one is the songs that are currently released on the new Turnstile album. Um, mm. I've really been all oh, yeah. about those guys lately. I don't know if you guys, do you guys ever hear the band Snack Case? Do you, yeah. do you guys ever hear them? So, so mm -hmm. that's, when I first heard Turnstile, that's what it thought me of, like the vocal delivery, the guitars, mm -hmm. um, everything. But there's some freaking bangers on this album, dude. Like nothing is insanely technical, but it's just some freaking good ass rock. Um, nice. I, got in, I got In Heat on there. You know, our oh, boys yeah. from Canada. I've been, with, you know, I, I just I jam them a lot. The um, there's two new Thrice songs that are out. So um, good. Music. Um, I got In Flames. I got Deftones. Um, Royal Blood. But I think the other one that's been freaking heavy rotation. I posted about it on my on my Instagram yesterday. Is um, Hope's Fall. Um, that album Arbiter. If you guys have never heard Arbiter, I have listened to that. You, you should mm. fucking throw it on, dude, because that is one of those albums. Th these guys had a long break from like the mid 2000s ish um, yeah. when they were releasing some pretty heavy, like good stuff. But this album came out in 2018 and just, I think it took everybody by surprise that was a fan of this band because holy shit, it's good, dude. Like, Highly, highly recommend this one. This is just one of those ones like I, I forgot about it, you know. And then I there have my great my, my shit on great shuffle. Podcast that I was listening to lately. Um, there's a podcast that's done by Tooth and Nail. It's called um, Labeled, and um, mm -hmm. they had one of the guys from Hope's Fall on, and they were talking about like the common history that Hope's Fall had with a lot of Tooth and Nail bands, like the Under Oath and Norma Jean, and and how they were kind of part of that scene, and like the name of the podcast was host fall should have been a tooth and nail band or a solid state band. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I love podcasts about all that stuff and it got me interested. And I think I did listen to some hopes fall stuff, but I'll, I'll have to listen to more of them. I'll send you a song and then I can guarantee it. It's going to get you to listen to the whole album. What about you, K Deb? What's been rocking your world? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my usual go-to is, you know, I'll just kind of throw on when I'm working is uh, I just have some classic rock playlists. I like to, you know, just kind of have on the background when I'm working. I mean, classic rock, like yellow card and blink 182 or <laughs> no, even more than that. Classic rock. I know what's, what's the, what's the new term for, for these guys, right? It's Metallica. Like a... <laughs> no, well, I don't know. Yeah. Someone has this kind of a bunch. There's like, there's lover boy journey, Boston, mm -hmm. Motley Crue, ZZ Top. I mean, it's just a whole bunch of stuff. But um, aside from that, uh, I know we're kind of sick of probably talking about it because of our, our songs. But last week we were jamming and we were kind of inspired by that audio slave tune. I kind of threw them on and kind of oh, had them gosh, on repeat so good. here and there recently. And then, of course, Stone Temple Pilots, when we did our cover, I was listening to them too. So I was kind of like just kind of getting into it. But one lately that um, is a good throwback. Uh, I threw on the whole album of Now You See Inside from SR71. Oh, nice. Oh, SR71. Yeah. So that was, that was so a good that throwback. Was, was that their first album, the one that they blew up on with that hit? I think so. Um, the Right Now right song? Now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is that classic rock? Oh, shit. We can't fight it anymore. We're getting old. <laughs> well, not that, but that would be a good <laughs> pop punk throwback. But yeah, I, I yeah, did that yeah. on, I think, the yesterday or on Monday. So yeah, that was, that was good. I feel like SR71 is one of those bands that around the time that they came out and even for probably a few years after they broke, they did not get respect from the pop punk community because mm -hmm. they were too mainstream, you know, like they, they were probably like, they, I assume still that they were one of those bands that got picked up because like label execs were like, pop punk is hitting, pop <laughs> punk is the thing. We got to sign this band SR71 because they had like this like pop punk alternative crossover kind of sound. 
Yeah. Like they sounded a little bit like, like, you know, a band like Fuel was doing pop punk or something. Yeah. But and now, really all these years that. later, all yeah. these years later, they get tons of respect from the pop punk community because everybody remembers that song and it was a great <laughs> song. Like it was yeah. really, really good. But, um, yeah. You know what I found? I, but. Well, you know what I found interesting about that whole point in time too? Like, you know, I, I was super into punk and the fat record stuff and the epitaph stuff and all that stuff that was going on during that time. But I remember there were so many pop punk bands that like popped up on major labels that I had never even heard of, you know, in yeah. the punk scene. Like it was, yeah. there was a lot of them, dude. A lot I of I think them. like Ridlin kids. Do you guys remember? Yeah. That? Ridlin kids. <laughs> I remember those guys. <laughs> yeah. I bought that CD actually. I mean, <laughs> I was, I was a sucker for anything pop punk. Like, I mean, I probably got into pop punk right when that was happening you know like for me yeah. it was um it was really blink 182 enema of the state then going back to dude ranch and then finding newfound glory self-titled mm -hmm. and then of course offspring was always like offspring really you know offspring and green day they were they they kind of brought it to the mainstream the thing that's been rocking my world is um is that mammoth uh, you know, oh, nice. Wolfgang yeah. Van Halen, because like the thing that like so, I love so much about what's happening with that project because it's amazing music, very very well written songs, um, but like the dude did not have to do anything. Like he is taken care of. You know, his dad is Eddie Van Halen. You know, he's got yeah. an estate that he could just chill. But he wanted to create something and he's creating something that's phenomenal. Like, and he's not like, I mean, following in the shoes of Eddie Van Halen, like, oh my goodness, the pressure. You know, yeah. like your dad is one of the best guitar players that's ever lived. So what are you going to put out? <laughs> you know, and it's so cool that like his voice is like front and center you know he's an amazing singer and then so yeah i love that about him he didn't have to do it but he's doing it and he's and he's like it's brave it's brave to do that and he's doing it and then in addition to that i feel like you know this is a side note but i think it's it's something i think about he does not look like the quintessential rock star like you do not see many heavy set baby face dudes fronting a rock <laughs> band like yeah and i think it's cool like he, because of his prominence being eddie van halen's son he's able to break that mold too like um, and so yeah. I, I think it's that's just a beautiful thing like I, I don't know if you guys saw any footage of it but he just played their the, his band just played their first live shows the other day fucker kills live he yes. sounds so good man his voice just like opens <laughs> his mouth and i'm like oh my goodness Mm -hmm. I'm so jealous of his range. Like, he, yeah. Do so. you do you follow him on any social media, Twitter, or anything? I haven't started yeah. following him individually. No, but I'm, Dude, I'm going to. Yeah. So, so, so it, it's funny because you know he gets a lot of shit for basically being like a silver spoon kid, right? I mean, just born into this world to one of the biggest rock stars ever. Yeah. Um, so people think that he doesn't deserve, you know, whatever career he has now in music but i mean dude he's he's fucking sick but like you know so he talks a lot of shit because people are always talking a lot of shit to him um mm. but there was a there's a couple of tweets um this one says it's so funny that there's a subset of people on this planet that can't stand that i exist all because they like a fucking band you know <laughs> wow. so that's that's the first one but this is the best one dude i saw this one the other day and this shit freaking cracked me up so this dude commented to him um, you come across like an immature little child with a bad attitude. Grow up. Never forget, you went straight to touring with GNR because of your last name. <laughs> so, wow. so Wolfie responds, "Hey man, they can kick me off the tour anytime if they, if they want if it's not working out. My last name may have opened the door, but it doesn't keep me here, and it certainly doesn't write, record, sing, or play the songs for me either. Fuck I'm man. the one. <laughs> I'm the one doing that." So I kindly suggest you eat my entire ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I kindly suggest you eat my entire ass. But I mean, that's great. Yeah. yeah my last name doesn't sing, dude. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, dude, that, that album that he put out and sure, you know, like he got a lot of, he, he probably got like any resource that he needed 
to make it happen, right? <clears throat> but but even with that, even with any resource that you need to make it happen, and even with all the recording technology, you can't suck and make good music. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. Like like it doesn't work that way. Like you know, and so he is everybody doing a good yeah. job. Everybody thinks that like oh well since his his father was you know the the guitar god you know Eddie Van Halen that he just got like front and center lessons to be a guitar god and I actually read this <laughs> where 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 he said his dad was a terrible teacher <laughs> you know because it was just like it happens you know it's like hey dad how do you do this oh well you just you just do it okay yeah you yeah. just do it so so here do it you do it now mm -hmm. you know so like he had to like learn how to play as well and it, and it wasn't like just you know silver spoon fed you know like of course yeah. i'm pretty sure there's something in his dna where it's like of course he's going to be musically inclined yeah. you know but uh but it's not like he was having like you know one-on-one -on -one sessions with the, with his dad you know like teaching them how to play it, it wasn't like that they would jam together yeah man it's crazy to me to think that like that someone you know could 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 highlight just that kind of a negative perspective and not acknowledge mm -hmm. how fucking hard and how brave it is to even take the guitar and play it being right. eddie van halen's son yeah, like, it's like more just pressure to, on to, you to right? go into the studio and make an album and put it out <laughs> like when you don't have to like like there's like but and then like you know the the a-hole that's like bringing just that negative perspective is the very one that's like making it harder to do like it, making it harder mm -hmm. to do it you know but i mean it seems like he's thriving in spite of all that so yeah that's cool all right, now it's time to get into some new music. Up first, um, actually, all three bands that we're going to feature on this episode are on our fans also like section on Spotify. And this first band that we're going to get into is a band from Jersey called uh, 60 Miles Down. And the song is called Silly Little Pessimist. I think this is a three-piece. And... Uh, I think that there's going to be a throwback reference that we're going to get pretty quick out of this intro. Um, so I'm going to play a little bit of the intro, stop it, and then we'll see if you guys get what I was picking up on, and then we'll listen to the whole tune. So here we go. Here is the song Silly Little Pessimist by 60 Miles Down. So did you guys hear anything in that guitar tone at the beginning there? I feel like I heard Thunder Kiss 65. Oh, okay. okay. Sure. Because yeah, the, the guitar rhythm tone almost matches it, you know, and it like, but I mean, it was, it, was, it was very cool. Like, I'm not, uh, I, I love that song. So, um, dude, yeah, yes, that's, that's white zombie is amazing all right let's go back but i i won't uh i won't do that again i promise here we go <laughs> that's fun right it's kind of cool they're doing the panning and stuff. I forgot in how to feel. Stuck in this dungeon, lifeless room of steel. I hear my heart beating. Six harmonies right there. Nice. Cool. Feel myself screaming, but I can't hear a thing. Taking their time.
So I'm not trying to take away from anything that any of the in the any of the instruments are doing, but I feel like the star of the show is the vocalist. I think that that his 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 vocal is really really strong. I think it sounds awesome, and then the harmonies that he's doing already yeah. are really really interesting. Mm -hmm. And they they've built the song because they're they're hanging out on that riff so long, so much that dun dun digga digga ding digga, digga, which is cool. But the vocal is changing enough to keep the song really interesting. Yeah, I was getting like, uh, I was definitely getting some uh, like Alice in Chains type vibes with the vocals and everything. And yeah, uh, that's cool. You know, but, but of course, like, I think the vocal is going to be the star of the show because like the music is is pretty simplistic. So it, it gives a lot of room for those uh, those melodies to, to really cut through everything. Yeah, definitely. I really like his voice. Don't know what I'm saying I also like the, the lyrics. Yeah, I've been listening to that. I've been running yeah. in on that. Yeah, I mean, because I guess you could say also that like it's true that like sometimes we listen to bands and we can't really understand every word they're saying. And this guy is singing in a way that you can actually understand every single word he's saying. Yeah. Which there's something to be said for that. Yeah. Oh, the nice lead tone. Sounds like a Dex solo. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Cool. Nice. That was sick. Yeah. It's a monster bass tone. Yeah, yeah dude, dude, I'm liking it. <laughs> chorus right there i think that's the chorus saves the song because it, it like it, it releases like that's the release because like mm. all the tension is happening dun, dun, digga, dun, dun, digga, digga, dun, dun, dun. like that's building tension the whole time and the way he's singing over that is building tension and that release like is yeah, really what you need like is yeah that that there's a very needed part and it sounds they, they did it really well I just yeah, love how it definitely like, opens up. Like a, I love how a single note, just with the right rhythm, can drive a song to be completely freaking rocking, dude. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's so yeah, sick. Wish that I had feelings. I wish that I could feel. <laughs> that was so cool. cool. I want to go back and hear that again. I love that part. He says, I wish that I had feelings. And then it stops. And he says, I wish that I could feel. Wish that, that was I cool. Make the Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah. Was really cool they're very cool lyrics very they're deep. very like yeah they're slightly disturbing but most stuff in that genre is <laughs> 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 but like I, I think that you know there's something really healthy to be able to um to speak that dark side within music and get it out because it's yeah. in everybody yeah i say it's i mean it's it's relatable right i mean we've all kind of felt that way in one way shape or another you know at some point hell yeah man like who hasn't had some trauma that's made them feel disconnected from their emotions or their feelings or like just yeah yeah and 
it's 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 very cool but yeah like that was a very cool song the structure was unique right yeah yeah it was but but it definitely rocked it didn't leave you confused with a unique structure sometimes a unique structure can actually leave you wondering like what is happening <laughs> <laughs> you know like am i supposed to like this or not i don't know <laughs> you know but yeah that was very cool and, and i love that yeah. um that first break how the vocals just kind of swelled back in yeah so it kicked in that was they, they did definitely did some cool like ear candy um mm -hmm. within this track yeah and yeah the no, guitar solo was... came in uh came in in a spot where i was not expecting so that was cool totally yeah, yeah. Like in a song with that structure, you'd almost expect the guitar solo as the outro. Because yeah. they only did the chorus two times, I think. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it was very cool. So good job, guys. Thanks so much for, oh, if you are watching this, <laughs> we haven't reached out to you yet. But uh, we're stoked to have you on our fans also like section because that means that people who like our music are listening to other rad bands like you guys. So um congrats on the track uh 60 miles down is the name of the band the song was uh silly little pessimist so actually they're kind of poking fun at that dark side mm, that he's yeah. singing at that's kind of cool um yeah so congrats guys if you're here because you're a fan of that band <laughs> please check out our band alter apex as well uh but let us know in the comments if you came over because you're a fan of 60 miles down uh let us know if there's some other songs by them that you'd like us to check out um we'll be adding that song to our playlist alter apex radio and uh yeah so thanks so much dudes and uh hope to keep in touch with you guys all right, so up next, we have a band called Diamond Six that is also on our Fans Also Like section on Spotify. Uh, this band has been doing their thing since 2017, and I'm trying to see where these guys are from, but I don't think that their bio says where they're from. But um, yeah, nonetheless, so I noticed that these guys were on our Fans Also Like a little while back, and I shared something on Instagram in one of our stories and one of the guys um, hit us up and I chatted with him for a bit, told him we'd probably be doing this in the future. So excited to finally get to this track. Uh, we're gonna be listening to the song Far From Home by the band Diamond Six. Actually, yeah, I think they're from Tokyo. I think they're actually from cool. Tokyo, Japan, which is super cool. Um, I don't know, like, I mean, us being over here in Albuquerque, New Mexico and the US, like, just everything sounds exotic and cool. Like where anywhere, <laughs> any, anywhere different, you know? Um, so uh, we're going to get into the tune Far From Home by Diamond Six. And if I remember right about these guys, um, listen to the bass. Because I think their bass player, I've even, I think I've seen some videos on their Instagram of their bass player just tearing some shit up. I think he's really, really good. But let's get into the tune. Here we go. Dissonant chords are cool. So I like that droning riff. That's very cool. How they just kind of do that mm -hmm. walk down and that half step kind of droney kind of style. That makes me think of Alice in Chains every time I hear it. I mean, good for Alice in Chains, right? Because like every time somebody does a creepy riff like that, everybody's like, 
that sounds like Alice in Chains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, 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 I like it because that's unpredictable. I think when bands do that too, I think it's mm-hmm. just a really good like. Um, that's what I'm picking up on this track is the riffs are just um, they're they're good. They're really well written. Yeah. It's not, not like not, the not, predictable not, third and fifth or whatever you know. Da, da, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da, da. Exactly. They actually, just go a half step down and like make you feel a little weird. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like what is happening? You know, it's a little creepy. Uh, it's just really cool that it goes from like you know that sort of like chromatic like walk down thing to like a really like melodic verse and so like almost like uh almost to like a like a sort of like pop punk chorus i was getting i that hear the pop punk in. yeah yes, that's yeah. what i was getting to you know so like it was just uh the song is really really cool you know like i think uh for its like unpredictability so like i'm like excited to see like where where you know the go- the song goes from here to bring those hand drum things that they did into the yeah the bridge there i was not expecting that i mean i'm sure no one was expecting that but yeah that bridge was like was what's sick, happening dude. when it fell and it when it kind of fell into that it's like oh, da, 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 da. it's like <laughs> well, the, like you said the rhythm section right there really shined through man like yeah i mean the bass has been good throughout this but right there dude he just that went bass off. run that he did <laughs> he she i don't know i don't know anybody in, in the band but dude they're like <laughs> yeah that was sick that was good i definitely enjoyed that it's like they turned like almost like prog rock after you know like when that when that section that yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah you know yeah, i said sure. that they were i said i felt they they were kind of unpredictable but i there's no way i would have i would have thought of that section at all it's really yeah, cool it was very cool that's freaking cool uh, that was really like, really cool like yeah yeah I, ahead, was, I was getting a i was getting some sort of like uh lechuza era phoenix tx vibes when oh, you're when you're mixing yeah. like when you're mixing sort of like the heavy with with like the pop element you know it's mm. like you got like sort of like the heavy riff but you know when the, when the chorus kicks in you're like oh you know, like that song "Something Bad right Is Gonna Happen." I think it was called "Something Bad Is Gonna Happen." Yeah, that song's so sick. <laughs> um, yeah, and I was I was just gonna comment too on like how it trailed off at the end. 
I love stuff like that. Stuff like that is like super ear candy for me. Um, and, and really everything that you do in a recording session, everything that you do on a recording for a song is high level decision making. Like, because you're putting it down. Like, this is how it's going to yeah. sound, you know? But I, I, I love the choice to do something that's just, you know, it's probably not even that well thought out. You know, it's just kind of like, it's like, a, you know, after you play the end of a song and you just go, you know, like on the strings or something like that. And then you leave it. Yeah. Because that shit's cool, man. Like, like the, <laughs> yeah. Like, and um, I mean, obviously that part, he was kind of like doing like a fast picking and then they trailed it off with some delay or something there. So it was probably a little more thought out, but mm. I just love stuff like that on recordings some some of that stuff is my favorite part sometimes yeah i agree yeah, definitely well great job guys thanks so much for hanging out with us and listening to your tune again that was the song by the band diamond six called far from home if you're a fan of diamond six and you came and hung out with us to listen to us chat about the tune let us know in the comments and we would love to invite you to check out our band alter apex just search alter apex on whatever streaming service you listen to and uh, let us know what you think of our music as well thanks so much for hanging out with us and congratulations diamond six on a killer tune all right, so we got one more tune to share with you. Uh, this is another band that we discovered from our fans, also like section on Spotify. This band is called the Motor League, and um, these dudes look like they would kick our asses in a parking lot if we ever <laughs> ran into them. <laughs> like when I look at this band picture of these dudes, they look so tough. They've got that like they have, they have biker gang kind of look to them. And it very much fits the name, the Motor League. But uh, this song is killer. The tune that uh, um, that I found from these guys that I thought would be good to share is a song called Discordia, which is already kind of just a cool name for a song. Um, but let's see here. So these guys have been doing their thing as well since 2017. And uh, looks like it says from their punk inspired beginnings through the more radio friendly territory of their more recent stuff. Uh, the band finds itself and its sound truly coming into its own with their new single that we're gonna listen to now, Discordia. So here is the song Discordia by the band The Motor League. Let's get into it. They chose to make the guitars really understated. Mm -hmm. Did you guys yeah. notice that? Like even that, that yeah. way of the bunch, bunch, the guitars are not in your face. I think that they're making a conscious decision to to bring the vocals to the forefront and kind of let them be the thing, which is cool. Yeah, I, was... I mean, but the chords that they're playing on the guitar are really cool too. I, I, I could I could actually stand to hear a little bit more heaviness and upfrontness from those, but it's it's very cool still. That note that he hits is killer. That's wow. ridiculous, dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. I might even take wow. back what I'm saying. Rad. I might take back what I said about the guitars earlier because, like, I feel like now I've heard some stuff from like Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, I'm getting that. It's kind of similar in the mix, like area you know in the in, in the the mix dynamic of that but yeah that 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 note that he hits on the chorus is ridiculous and coming in with that note 
is yeah. that's gnarly, man. That's some. Doesn't even build skill. up to it, right? Yeah. Just goes, no, I was just like, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> not even gonna try. But right. um, <laughs> we'll squeal probably. <laughs> Harmony for sick, Singer could have sang for like nice. Motley Crue back in the day. <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, you know, considering how Vince Neil sounds recently, maybe he should sing for Motley Crue now. Um, <laughs> Vince Neil's kind of uh, poor, poor dude, dude and, man. I yeah. feel bad for him. He, he, I love his voice from back in the day, like some of his performances. But we digress. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, those those notes are killer. Like the, I. You just hear certain notes like that, and you—I can't help but think of like the '80s metal stuff, because all yeah. of those singers—you couldn't be a singer in one of those bands unless you could hit notes like that. Like, you had to be able to do it. There's some booze in there. Yeah, very cool. definitely hear the radio oh, friendly sick. aspect that they mentioned because like, yeah. i mean that that song like is radio length all day mm-hmm. long like i mean mm-hmm. that that song was was written to, to be on the radio for sure the bridge was really cool the bridge made me think a little pop punk it was it was kind of i felt like there's a little bit of that flavor in there definitely queens of the stone age type stuff yeah but Queens of the Stone Age is not singing like that. Like his voice is that, that's very <laughs> cool. That was, that, was, that was great. Right on, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hope you enjoyed watching us get down on your tune. Uh, again, that was Discordia by the band The Motor League. And uh, if we ever do meet you in a parking lot, we hope that we don't end up getting in a fight with you or anything because you guys would kick our asses. <laughs> Just by the way you look. I mean, <laughs> I'll have to put up a picture of them. <laughs> but, um, yeah congratulations on the song congratulations on it sounds like you guys have a lot of great momentum that you built up since 2017 when you started doing this thing but uh yeah we hope to be in touch with you if we ever end up in the same city we'd love to share a stage with you guys if you came to watch our show because you're a fan of the motor league we'd love for you to check out our band alter apex um, just search for us on any of the streaming services uh, where you find music and uh, let us know what you think. Also, if there's any other Motor League songs or any other bands that you'd like for us to check out, hit us up in the comments below. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We've been the band Alter Apex. And uh, yeah, please check out our music on all the streaming services. And I hope you dug the few bands that we featured on this uh, week's show. And um, definitely hit up our socials, follow us on Instagram, uh, check out the Alter Apex playlist on Spotify. And we know you're on YouTube right now, so check out all of our music videos. We have five different music videos uh, for all the songs that we've released so far that we'd love for you to check out. 
and uh, come back and join us again for an Alter Apex Radio in probably a couple weeks or so. Peace. Wasted all your love, discording you. That's good. I like that song.